Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Secretary, on September 29th, the National School Board Association wrote to the White House calling parents domestic terrorists for being concerned about their kids' school. Within a few days, Attorney General Garland issued a directive to the Department of Justice and the FBI to crack down not just on violent, but what he called, quote, harassment and intimidation against school board administrators, board members, teachers, and staff. Um, the School Board Association met with the White House and got tips from them on what to put in their letter before sending it. We've also recently learned from an internal memorandum that the School Board Association, uh, quote, as disruptions at school board meetings grow, the association has been actively engaged with the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, has anyone from the Department of Homeland Security met with anyone from the National School Board Association? Senator, not that I'm familiar with, and I uh, don't know why that would fall within our jurisdiction. Did you see a copy of the Attorney General's memorandum uh, before it was released? I, I did not. Okay, thank you. Um, a few weeks ago, it was reported that the Department of Justice was in talks to give payments of up to $450,000 per person to illegal immigrants who were subject uh, to enforcement of the zero tolerance policy during the last administration. Um, have you or anyone at the Department of Homeland Security been involved in those talks? I have not, and I am not aware of um, anyone in the department who has been involved in the talks. That is something within the province of the Department of Justice. So, so let me ask you this, and, and let me be explicit. I'm not talking about the lawsuits that are filed or the Department of Justice's litigation strategy or potential settlements. Um, who do you think is more deserving of cash payments from the United States government, illegal migrants who cross our borders or the family of U.S. soldiers who are killed in action? Senator, I think, um, if, if I may, you know the, uh, how I'll answer that question. Um, I think that uh, the families uh, of those who lost their lives wearing our nation's uniform um, are um, our greatest responsibility as a nation. So do you, I, I can't. Do you think it, that it, do you think it's it's Senator, shocking that illegal migrants could get up to four and a half times what the family Senator of a let, let, service let, member killed in action? Senator, if I if I may, um, uh, I'm a lawyer by uh, profession, so I don't and uh, don't think it advisable uh, to render opinions on facts uh, uh, on cases the facts and circumstances of which I am not familiar, because I know that the. Uh, the cases that are before uh, the Department of Justice uh, to which you are referring are Federal Tort Claims Act, where uh, not um, all of those unlawfully present are filing suit against the government, uh, but those parents um, whose children uh, were taken from them as a means of deterring irregular migration, uh, the part of the zero tolerance policy of the prior administration, the family separation uh, policy. Uh, that received bipartisan condemnation and, quite frankly, the condemnation of the American public. What is an appropriate uh, outcome of that litigation in response to the, federal's, uh, the family separation policy, the cruel policy, is something I cannot opine on. Well, I'm so, just since not you call the policy cruel, let me ask you this. Um, during the Biden administration, has the Department of Homeland Security ever separated a single illegal alien? from someone they claim as their child? Yes, but not as part of the zero tolerance policy, not as part of uh, the family separation policy uh, that was so cruel. Let me explain. So, uh, well, me, okay, so I, I, I understand that I'm, you're saying must, it's not part of the policy. I'm, I'm sorry, no, if I may, Senator, no, I must Actually, clarify. no, you may not. It's my time, I'm sorry, my time is limited. So you've said that the, that the Department of Homeland Security has done this during the Biden administration. You were the Deputy Secretary during the Obama administration. Did the Department of Homeland Security ever separate a single illegal alien from someone they claimed that was their child in the Obama administration? Neither in the uh, Biden administration nor in the Obama administration did we execute the zero tolerance policy that the Trump administration promulgated and cruelly enforced. I'd say the policies you've been implementing are complete tolerance for illegal migrants crossing our border. Uh, let's turn our attention there. How many illegal aliens crossing the country into the United States in 2020? I don't have the, oh, um, I don't. I have the numbers from uh, CBP in front of me. It's 458,000. How many illegal aliens have crossed into the United States in 2021, which I would note still has six weeks to go? I believe the number um, um, taking out of that approximately 1.7 million, the number of recidivists 
So in other words, uh, unique individuals, approximately 1.3, 1.4 million. Okay. That would be my estimate. So I have 1.7, but that's fine. So it's somewhere between um, two and a half to four times as much. No, because uh, the 1.7 million figure to which you refer, Senator, includes recidivists. Okay, so let's say it's 1.3, it's still two and a half times. Um, are you satisfied that two and a half times as many illegal migrants have crossed in this country this year as compared to last year? Uh, no, I'm not, but um, uh, worse is to uh, promulgate and operationalize a policy that defies our values as a nation. Um, how about that defies our sovereignty as a nation? Oh, our sovereignty is um, unflinching. Oh, really? Because as it stands out at the border, anyone from anywhere in the world can simply show up and cross into this country. I don't think that the, um, uh, the hundreds of thousands of individuals who've been expelled under Title 42, the CDC's authority, would act. Well, the 1.7 million have crossed here probably think so. Let me, let me conclude with this. What should be a higher priority of the United States government, securing our border or giving amnesty to illegal aliens who are already here? Um, uh, Senator, J justice is our priority. That includes securing our border and providing relief to those who qualify for it under our laws. So, so you refuse to prioritize whether we should try to protect our border from people crossing it who have zero right to be here or giving amnesty to the millions of people that are in this country illegally. Uh, Senator, I, I disagree wholeheartedly with the phrasing of your question. Uh, it is um, an inaccurate phrasing of our missions, our responsibilities, our challenges, and our actions. How, how is it inaccurate? I mean, we, of the fact we have had 1.3 million by your own admission cross just this year. There are millions more in this country who are here illegally. I'm simply asking you, what is more important, what's a higher priority of the United States government, to protect our border or to give amnesty to those who are here illegally? Um, Senator, we, we do not have the authority nor the intention to give amnesty. You testified that you wanted it, though, in your opening statement. No, what I... What a I, pathway to citizenship, legal status, whatever you want to call it, any kind of adjustment. What's more important, securing our border or giving some kind of adjustment to the legal status of those illegal aliens present in the country today? Senator, I consider those to be uh, both very significant priorities because they are inextricably intertwined. If, in fact, we can pass legislation that fixes once and for all our immigration system, we will have addressed in a material part the challenges at our border, and it will advance our efforts to secure it. Well, they're intertwined chiefly because the open borders that you and Joe Biden have permitted have attracted even more illegal immigrants here. That means our borders are more open than it ever has been. Thank you, Senator Cotton. Senator Lee, we're on the second round of questions. Three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Mr. Secretary, on some of these questions, including the questions many of my colleagues have asked about the proposed settlement with those who have crossed through our borders unlawfully, you've indicated you're inclined to dodge the question. I don't expect that to change between now and the end of this hearing, but I, I, I do want to communicate to you some of the things that I've been hearing all over the place from people across the political spectrum uh, uh, throughout the state of Utah. A lot of them really don't like that. They don't appreciate it. You know, the, the average family of four in Utah has a total household income of $71,000. If you've got a family of four that crossed through our borders unlawfully and was subject to this settlement agreement, You'd be looking at $1.8 million in a settlement. You know, it would take two, two and a half decades for the average family of four in Utah to earn that. So the thought that the federal government is offering that as a reward, as an incentive for, for people who cross through our borders unlawfully is unthinkable to many Utahns, as well it should be. Yeah. People of Utah and people of the United States certainly deserve better than that. The fact that this was even seriously considered is troubling to me. I don't know why we want to do that. And I, and I certainly don't believe that one can deny uh, the impact that this would have as a magnet for future illegal immigration. Now, about 60 percent 
of those here unlawfully or visa overstays, people who came here lawfully uh, and, and then fell out of their lawful status. I wish we had more time and I could ask you, you know, what you're doing to apprehend those people. I wish I could ask you further things like what, uh, what additional resources you might need, because I, 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 it'd be good to know what we could do for you to be able to gain operational control of the border again, which the American people want and expect and need and deserve. Look, the Department of Homeland Security has clearly failed in its mission to maintain operational control of its borders. The department itself acknowledges how important it is. Over two million people have likely crossed over our southern border illegally this year, with no end in sight. You see no concrete plan for stopping these border surges. Instead, your department's focused on climate change. These facts seem to indicate, Mr. Secretary, that Americans cannot hope to keep fentanyl out of their communities, that terrorists and gang members can't be kept out of their neighborhoods and criminal aliens off their streets. As long as you're in charge of the Department of Homeland Security and running it the way that you've been running it, this cannot continue. For the safety of the American people, including people like the woman who was recently raped in open sight in a Philadelphia subway train just recently by someone who shouldn't have been here in the first place, who had a criminal alien background, I, I implore you, you got to fix this. Fix it or step down. Thank you.